Without any further delay, let's meet the candidates. Uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, I'm not going to read anybody's names or bios out there. I think they're far better qualified to do that than I am. And we won't have any name pronunciation issues if you do that as well. So, uh, with that, uh, Lenny, four minutes. Each candidate has four minutes to uh, to go ahead with their introduction. Lenny's going to time them, and he'll hold up signs for them, and I'll cut them off at 4:01. So, candidates, we'll start with Caesar. Off you go. Uh, good morning. Thank you for uh, everyone for being here. Thank you, Howard and Judy, and the Temple of Manual Brotherhood for inviting uh, us all here today. Uh, my name is Cesar Archia. Uh, I was born and raised in New York City. I'm a, I'm a product of the Bronx public school system. I'm proud of that. I'm the son of hardworking immigrant parents who came to this country um, and uh, worked and worked and toiled every day to ensure that uh, their their children would have a better life than they had and better than their parents. I've worked my entire life since the age of seven, I'm sorry, since the age of 14. I've worked um, in every job imaginable and some that actually strain uh, the imagination. I'm proud of that as well. I was the first in my family to graduate from college. I put myself through college, I worked hard. Um, I worked in the night shift at Metropolitan State Hospital while going to, to uh, college full time. Uh, my parents, uh, tried to do the best they could, but they could not, they simply could not afford, afford to help much. In fact, oftentimes money flowed the other way from, um, from me to them. I see my kids in the audience. My daughter's actually petrified thinking of that, but uh, that's not gonna happen. Uh, I, um, you know, against all odds, I was the first in my family to graduate from college, the first. And I came to Massachusetts in 1981. I, um, I graduated with a business degree. I, I from, um, from, Upon graduating, I, I worked for the uh, next 13 years at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston as an analyst in the research department. I um, analyzed and compiled the uh, numbers and data and figures for the Board of Governors down in D.C. I attended uh, Suffolk University Law School simultaneously uh, while I worked with, at the Federal Reserve Bank full time. I, um, I, uh, I graduated from Suffolk University Law School in 1998 and began uh, working as, at the Eastern District Attorney's Office, first under, under Kevin Burke and subsequently Jonathan Blodgett. Uh, I worked as an advocate in every court in, in, in Essex uh, County. I worked in the Lynn District Court, with that, as we know, services this uh, jurisdiction. Um, why, why am I running? I'm running because I understand what hard work is. I'm running because of my education, because of my, my experience. But more importantly, I'm running because I hear the concerns and the, um, and the issues that my neighbors and I all share. And that's underfunded, uh, underfunded uh, schools. Um, our, our, our financial instability in town budgets and school budgets, and I feel that I can make a difference. Uh, my education, my life experience, my work experience, my law school training experience, the relationships that I've built over the years in the legal community, the business community, as well as the um, as well as the um, the uh, in government, um, I feel would serve uh, would serve me well to represent the district. Um, I, an, I have been an advocate for this district. I will continue to be an advocate for this district. Uh, uh, hard work and, and fighting um, is, are some things I'm, I'm actually very familiar with. I intend, the next representative has to, be a, has to be a fighter for this district, has to be a bridge between the district and Beacon Hill, has to, be a, a, uh, has, to, uh, has to engage in collaboration and consensus building and working with the leadership on Beacon Hill to ensure that, 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 that state aid to the district is maximized and that we can work together to do better. We can do better and we have to do better. Um, my, I bring a skill set that, that, that dovetails precisely with the work necessary for the next state representative and I hope that you can support me. I, I need your support, uh, I need your, your, uh, your help and more importantly I need your vote and I can do that. Thank you. Thank you Caesar Mark. My name is Mark Barry, and I live on Atlantic Avenue, Marblehead. I was born and raised in Marblehead, and I'm a product of the Marblehead Public School System, as are my children, and as was my father before he passed away. Um, it was great to hear Caesar, and I also want to thank everybody uh, for showing up on a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock to, uh, to listen to us and to get some more information to make decisions. I'm running as an independent candidate. Um, I have always wanted to keep that option open in my voting status, and I remain that way. Uh, I believe we need some independent representation at the State House. Um, I'm very proud of this town. I, like I said, I was born and raised here. I'm a non-traditional student. I actually got married uh, 
at a very young age and, and with my wife had three children uh, who are now off in other parts of the country, uh, some teaching school, some working at colleges, some in business. Um, they got their education and their start in Marblehead. They got their values in this area. Um, one of my first jobs in this area was I worked on Children's Island as a camp counselor. I was actually the director of maintenance. Uh, and I followed that up from graduating from high school and became a plumber. Um, and worked in the plumbing industry, had a little business in town here, uh, and then went to work for a larger company in Salem that serviced uh, a lot of the North Shore area. I spent a lot of time working down at General Electric and Lynn, and we specialized also in, in school construction. Uh, and school rehabilitation. As I said, I'm a non I was a non-traditional student. At 40 years old, I got a Master's of Education and Management. And at 50 years old, I got a law degree, and I currently practice law. I started with my first office in Marblehead. I currently have an office in Salem. I run into Caesar a lot in different courtrooms. Um, it's a new career for me. Uh, along the way, I was uh, involved with my brother's table over in Lynn. I went to uh, volunteer to serve meals because I wanted to give something back. Somehow I got uh, Shanghai into becoming a member of the board of directors. Um, I think they knew about my background in construction because at the time that they uh, elected me uh, as a committee member of the board of directors, it was a time they were relocating from Union Street down to the multi-service center. So I. Um, I worked on the, the negotiations between my brother's table, the city of Lynn, and the community. Uh, and we successfully moved that operation down to the multi-service center where the shelter is in Lynn. I spent about eight years on that board and finally decided I would get off that board and immediately was asked to be on the Project Cope board in Lynn. And it, I'm a bit of a slow learner when it comes to nonprofits. Uh, what happened was they needed to rehab all their facilities and they heard about my construction background and kind of shanghai me into becoming a board member. Uh, I became the chairman of the Committee of Construction and Rehabilitation over there and then became the board president. I retired from that to go to law school. All the time I was still in the construction business. Um, I started to go to law school. I went through Massachusetts School of Law up in Andover and graduated and started my practice uh, about three years ago. The reason I think I'm good for this position is because I'm from the area. I change on a regular basis myself. I know change is difficult, but I, I know I can facilitate change between diverse groups of people, and I thank you for all inviting me in. Thank you very much, Mark. John? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to be here today. My name is John Blaise Dell, and as you know, I'm running for state representative on the Republican ballot. I was born in Lynn, attended school in Lynn. Uh, my dad was an employee of the old General Electric. He was one of the original jet pioneers. Um, there were six children in my family. Only my dad worked, and yet somehow he was able to own a house and raise a family. From there, I moved to Swampscott, where I attended Swampscott Public Schools. <laughs> at 13, I uh, got my first job at the old golf range in Benin Square. It's now gone. Uh, I also worked at the old New Ocean House, in the off-seasons, bussing cables. Now gone. From there, I actually continued to work down at the old David Shoe Factory downtown in Lynn, a real sweatshop. I watched that building burn during the Lynn fires uh, while I was standing outside as a police officer. After graduation, uh, I went on to serve our military, where I spent three years in the U.S. Army. My last year was spent with a combat unit in Vietnam. Upon returning from home, I moved to Marblehead. I loved this town. Uh, I liked it as a kid, as a teenager. Spent a lot of time over here, and this is where I chose to live. Uh, my first real job at Marblehead was at the be very, very beginning of the Council on Aging. I served as their 
transport person, their driver. I took that job on at the request of then selectman Tom Jordan and uh, took the job knowing that I had to use my own vehicle to transport seniors in Marble Head with no gas mileage. Uh, I worked very closely with Edith Dodge, Pat Warnock, and somehow we got that project off the ground and it is what it is today. From there, I got my second real job uh, at the old Salem Jail as a correctional officer, working to then Sheriff uh, Roger Wells. Uh, I went on to work for two other sheriffs, Bob Cahill and Charlie Ridd. Things, uh, things at the jail got pretty wild, and I had an opportunity to move on to the Superior Court as a deputy sheriff. I seized that opportunity, and I then got into the judicial branch of government, and uh, things even got better for me. I had an opportunity to work within the uh, Salem District Court and uh, working for Judge, uh, now retired, Judge Saul. Uh, I became the Chief Court Officer of the Salem District Court. Uh, I had an opportunity to take the police test for here in Marble Head. Back in, back in 76, and from there, uh, I became a member of the Marblehead Police Department, where I've spent uh, my remaining real working years within the police department. Uh, I also uh, presently own my own mortgage company. I got into the business in 92, and as I can see, my time is running short, <laughs> and uh, I wish I could talk a lot longer up here. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, John. Tanya? Good morning. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces. Um, as I recall, I spoke to uh, some of you back in uh, 2000 at Temple Israel about the history of women in the FBI. So, for those of you who heard me before, I'm not going to repeat the whole story. But before I start about my background, I'd just like to thank uh, Temple Emmanuel for hosting this event. I think it's wonderful to have such an opportunity to get the message out. I'm Tanya DiGenova, and I'm also running on the Republican ticket for state representative. I'm probably one of the most exotic candidates on this panel here. I'm a, actually, I'm a first-generation immigrant. I was born in Hamburg, Germany from a Russian father and the French mother. When I was only two weeks old, we moved to Morocco, to Casablanca, where my dad worked for the U.S. Air Force as a civilian, and um, I went to a French school. When I was 13 years old, we moved back to the United States, and uh, basically, I finished high school at Syracuse. English was my fourth language, is my fourth language, I should say. In addition to English, I also learned uh, Haitian Creole when I was in the FBI, a little Spanish, a little Arabic, and whatnot. But the point of the matter is just uh, life has not always been easy for me. Uh, when I graduated from high school, then I went on to Syracuse University, where I got my bachelor's degree in education and French literature. Then I went on to Georgetown University, I got my master's degree in international relations. Uh, in 1974, I joined the FBI, and they recruited me when I was teaching in Monterey, California, in the military. I was teaching in Russian. Uh, they recruited me because I spoke fluent Russian, and it was the Cold War. But when I came to Washington, I realized I was too short to be an agent back in those days. So I worked as the first non-agent um, Russian linguist in the Washington field office of the FBI. Uh, in 1978, when Judge Webster took over the FBI, he actually implemented a much more fa fairest way of recruiting agents and screening agents, and in 1979, I became a special agent of the FBI. I subsequently spent 20 years as a special agent of the FBI, and was assigned in, to was in Washington, Miami, Seattle. I served four years at FBI headquarters in national security, and then I spent my last three years here as a supervisor special agent of the Boston office, um, specializing in national security, uh, counterterrorism, and civil rights. Since I retired from the FBI at the end of 99, I founded the TSD Security Consulting Group. 
um, specializes in pre-employment background investigation, security consulting, and uh, corporate due diligence worldwide. From 2003 to 2005, I uh, served as a consultant for the U.S. military at Ramstad Air Base for OSI and at Wiesbaden for the 66th MI, which is the investigative branch of uh, the U.S. Army, in uh, specializing in personnel security matters. While I was in Germany, I also worked as a Red Cross volunteer at the Landstuhl Medical Center, taking care of our wounded soldiers. Since I came back, um, my, my home is my home. I've been here since 1996, and I like to apply my years of public service and my skills uh, to serve you better on, camp, on Beacon Hill. I'm a proud mother of two grown daughters, the youngest one, Alexandra, graduated from Marblehead High School in 2002, and as a Marblehead, naturally, I have a big pride that I can handle a sailboat. Before I left for Germany and since, I served on a race committee at the Boston Yacht Club, and I'm an active member of the Marblehead Rotary Club. Recently, I've also been invited to become a member of the North Shore uh, Hospice Russian Advisory Committee. I know my time is running short, so i just like to reiterate that I would like to serve you better on Beacon Hill. I'm a hard worker with proven uh, results. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Lord? Thank you, Howard, and thank you, Judy, for hosting this event. And thank you all for taking an interest in this election. I can tell by looking around, I'm happy to report that democracy is alive and well here on the North Shore. My name is Lori Ehrlich, and in some ways you could say that over the last 10 years, I have been representing your interests. I was born in Lynn, went to school in Marblehead, then Swampscott, graduating Swampscott High School. I uh, went on, I have a bachelor's degree in accounting from Lehigh University. I have a master's in public administration from Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, just recently earned in 2005. I have been a practicing CPA for 22 years in the area. This experience has kept me very well grounded in business and economics. Um, in addition, I have also been a founder of two nonprofit environmental and public health organizations here on the North Shore. While at Harvard, I was also president and founder of the Kennedy School's Energy Caucus. But my path to policy is a little different than most. Mine was a path of passion, not of politics. Let me tell you how it all began. Uh, about 10 years ago, I noticed a trail of little sooty footprints that my toddlers, my, my, my two daughters, had brought in from the deck outside our, in, in our backyard. When the owners of the Salem Power Plant offered to power wash my deck, I realized something. I realized that it was going to be a lot harder to clean our lungs than it was going to be to clean up our deck. Through the founding of HealthLink and the participation in the grassroots movement that began, began right in this community, I have had the opportunity to participate in some amazing experiences. Through this organization, I have worked with four governors, I have filed legislation on behalf of our community and throughout the state that has created some of the toughest power plant, power plant regulations in this country. I have worked with local officials, I have worked with my community, and all of this was done as an ordinary citizen. In 2001, or 2000, I followed the trail a little further, up to uh, Wenham Lake. <clears throat> Wenham Lake is the drinking water for 80,000 North Shore residents up in Beverly and Salem and parts of Wenham. Come to find out that sitting at the bottom of this lake was three to six feet of power plant waste, the bottom of the drinking water. It had been there for about 50 years, and almost nobody was doing anything about it. Within 100 days from this discovery, working with others in the community, I had formed an organization called the Wenham Lake Watershed Association, gotten everybody around the table, including state and local officials, had a grassroots movement of support that wasn't there before behind us, and we 
got a commitment from the original owners of the power plant to clean up this mess. About two weeks ago, we celebrated the complete cleanup. Uh, it was a five-year effort, the complete cleanup of Wedding Lake. politics, it was pure politics. It was you, it was me, it was our friends, our family, our neighbors. While I've been out speaking with people, I've noticed something. People are very insecure about the future. School budgets, energy prices are soaring, and foreclosures are in the news every day. With my proven track record of taking on difficult issues and winning, I will strengthen the, vo the district's voice on Beacon Hill. And I'm at the end, but I thank you for your time. And I